you know, I have to admit that even for myself, if I'm declaring an array of strings in C sharp, I might get the braces in the wrong place, or it may take me a little time to get the syntax. Yeah, the right. syntax you don't know for. Yeah. yeah. So, so if somebody doesn't know the syntax, this is a way to help them. So I could see using this tool for some variables, even myself. Although, if you were like a programmer working every day, you'd probably be just write the code so quickly that you wouldn't even think about it. Right. So obviously, this wouldn't be <laughs> useful. But for somebody who's new, it's something that yeah, they, it's a beginner they, tool. Exactly. So if you go to the tools menu you'll see that there are two new items added after you install the learning pack. The first one, it says the assistant class designer, which I'll come right back to, and then the visual variable declarative designer. Long Does it let you specify which language you're working with so it knows which one to do? Well, it, it automatically knows if you're in VB or, or it knows if you're in C Sharp, so there's really okay. no, it's so you don't have to specify. that's awesome. Right. So what I'm going to do is pop up the, uh, the variable uh, declaration window. And, of course, you want to make sure that you have your cursor where you want the various variables to be inserted. Right. Otherwise, you might get some some syntax errors there. So this this box, dialog box, lets me declare integers, strings, booleans, arrays, and even structs. So I'll just do a couple examples. I'll do a, uh, an integer and then I want to do an array of strings because that's one that trips me up a little bit. Sure. So if I come in here I can say what's the variable name, just call it variable one. Uh, because of where I'm inserting it I want to say none for the access modifier. You have to be careful depending where you put in these variables. And then it actually shows you here, here's what the declaration statement is going to look like. And so I've declared a variable that's an integer. And if I just hit insert, or hit OK, it inserts it into my code. So you can see that it was inserted. So very simple. Uh, but let's take a little more complicated example. If I go to an array, let's say it's an array of strings. I'll call it array bar 1. Um, again, I'm going to say no access modifier. So let's declare a three-dimensional by a three by three array of strings, uh -huh. and I can actually even say generate initial values here. So it just kind of picks some random strings that right. are included, so that you can actually um, have a functional array. And you can see the decoration here; it's a little bit long uh, on the screen. So I'm just going to hit OK and insert that. And if I close this window, you can see that I have this new line of code that says string array array bar one new string. It's a three by three array, and we have a three by three array of sample strings that are included. So this is a good way to quickly declare variables without getting tripped up on the syntax. So no, that's awesome. The integer one, one, I mean, that's simple enough, but the string one is right. definitely helpful. That's I why like I like that. these examples. The int one, you probably wouldn't really do that right, for right. string and arrays, especially. It kind of makes sense, and even for structs. Definitely. So that's what the uh, variable declarer tool is for. And then let's go into assistant class designer as well. I'm going to jump over to another file where I can add a class. Sure. So if I go to the tools menu, click on assistant class designer, Get another dialog that pops up. I want to create a class, so I click on class, and it pops up a form here, and I can even do some color coding stuff. So I'm going to just call it my class one. And if I if I have mul have multiple classes declared here with the editor open, I could actually derive from one to the other. But in this case, we'll just do a simple class. So I add the class, say OK, and then it allows me to come to this other dialog where I can declare all my properties, methods, and events. And so I'm going to click on property. Let's call it prop one. That's very inventive. Yeah. <laughs> and you can do a get and set. You can say it's a get or a set or a get and set. You can say it's private or protected. And you can say it's an integer or it's a Boolean. So let's make it a Boolean. OK. So I add property, and it adds it to the list. And then I can do prop two. And let's make this one a string. So I add that also. Let's just make that a set only. OK, property. So now I've got two of them listed here. I hit OK, and now you can see that it's added it to the list of properties. Yeah. I can do the same thing with a method. I can say method1, again, public private protected. What does it return? Let's say it returns a void. So I add the method, click OK, adds it to my list. Same thing with an event. I can even declare event1. Let's say we'll just leave it public. Okay, so now it's basically it's it's provided this list of properties, methods, events. If I say generate code, it takes me to another window where I can see all the code, and then if I say insert code, it puts it in my file. So you can see that it declared the class. It has uh, created a namespace, class my class one, as the event handler. We can see the um, the private boolean variable, and we also can notice the difference here between. Um, Prop one I had is a get and a set, so you've got both a get and set calls. And for prop two, um, you can only set this, so there's no way to do a get. So this this just shows you that it can, can 
customize a little bit to um, whatever kind of property you want. And so that inserts it into your code, and then you can you can go from there. And let me go back to my other C sharp file. And the last thing that I want to show you is called the flowcharting tool. Yeah. So I think this is also a pretty cool tool that is a very graphical way to visually see how your code is working. So I just have a label click event here. What I've actually put in here for the purposes of this um, discussion is I've pasted in the binary search code that I took from the search control just so that we have something in our flowchart. Sure. So if I come to label one click, right click on it, and from my context menu, now you have this option generate flowchart. So this is a new thing also with the learning pack that you wouldn't normally have. So if I click on that, it pops up a window and you can see that it's making a flowchart. I can make it like a top level or a statement level flowchart. I can also come in here and modification. So the if condition, I can change my color to make it a different color and you can see that the, the values are changing. So you can pretty much customize the different colors and the other thing that's nice about this is that you can you can save it as a JPEG. So you could save it, send awesome. it to your teacher with your homework, and so it's generating the flowchart of what it would step through your code. Right. That that function that, that yeah. you're you're on. So you have to be on a so function you can to see it, it visually. That's very right, cool. You can see you know the condition here. If it's false, we do this. If it's true, then we look for the midpoint of the array. That's the way the sort is working. So this would be another way actually to explain the sort algorithm is to say well create the code, put it in your file, make yeah. a flowchart of it, and then watch the flowchart and understand how it's working. So the teacher could also use this on the screen. So it'd be like to divide them. set into two. If not found, divide into two again. Look. Right, go back. Yeah, so that's cool. So that's basically the way it works. So those are really the five features that we have in the, in the learning pack. Um, again, it's something that we have quite a bit of interest in. It's, it's a good thing for people who are getting started. I would recommend if people were really getting started in programming, they might want to look at Small Basic, which is another free download that you can find from mm -hmm. Microsoft. Uh, that's really a great tool for getting started with a very simple environment. If you want to then move kind of into a more elaborate environment like Visual Basic or C Sharp, Visual Studio, then this is a good way to kind of help you transition and help students move into that environment and work with real code. And after a while, they may use some of these tools, and then over time, I would expect that you would move past them. You would. You know, maybe you still use the class design. Maybe you still use the flowchart tool occasionally. But you know, like you said, declaring variables, it gets easier over time. Maybe sure. for an array, you still might fall back and use something like that. Yeah. Um, so it's, it, they're tools that will gradually, um, people will outgrow them in many cases, but that's still a good way to get them, hopefully to keep their interest long enough to get them hooked on program. So for people that are interested, where can they find this? Great question. So what I would suggest is you go to uh, this website called Visual Studio Gallery, uh -huh. which is visualstudiogallery.com. If you go there, you can just search for Learning Pack, and it will it will pull up the Visual Studio Learning Pack. And you can it's about a four or five minute download, so it's pretty fast. Awesome. Turn it on zip install, and, and we'll just take a few minutes to install it. Cool, Mike. Thank you so much yeah. for your time. Great. Thanks very much, Max. Enjoy talking about it.